Sean Locke is sitting with us. Sean, you are with uh, Title Partners. Welcome, Sean. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, well, it's good to see you again. And uh, Title Partners, great partner here with Michigan Real Talk, helping people with their real estate transactions. And I got to tell you, American Dreamer, as a seasoned real estate broker, I've seen a lot of purchase agreements. Yes. And the addendum, the addenda. Uh -huh. You know, there's so many different papers that go with it. Uh, but I'm not an attorney. And I recommend, especially, I mean, like, you have to have it if you're into commercial real estate. Wouldn't you, wouldn't oh, you agree? Sure. If you're into commercial real estate, you really need a, an attorney at your hip, wouldn't you say? I'd absolutely agree. And the other thing, Paul, just to expand on what I said earlier, um, if you're going to have an attorney, I definitely would recommend it on if on the buyer's side. It's more critical, in my view, than on the seller side. Right. I agree. Um, and, you know, obviously with the seller, my general rule is as long as the purchase price is correct and there's an as-is clause in the purchase agreement, then typically you're in good shape. Uh, I would still recommend it would make sense to have an attorney make sure that the purchase agreement covers other aspects that, that you'd be concerned about. From the buyer's perspective, though, as I know you know as a, as a real estate expert, that's really where an attorney, a good attorney, can come in handy. Yeah, because it's buyer beware, right? I mean, it, you're the one who ends up with what, however that transaction's going to turn out, you're the one who ends up with it. The seller typically is in a position to walk away from that transaction, right? So Absolutely. it's the buyer who really needs to make sure they're getting themselves into a situation they're going to be happy with for the long term. Absolutely. And a, and a good real estate attorney can take them through, you know, as, for example, Sean can talk to the issue of title and, and certainly with title work, frequently with a title policy, there's exceptions and exclusions. Right. A lot of times the layperson is not going to understand what those exceptions mean. It could be an encumbrance for all purposes. There could be a, you know, part of their house or their garage might be sitting on somebody else's lot. There might be some type of an easement. There's a number of issues that in title work could come up that they wouldn't understand what that means. They buy the house and now they're stuck with a problem. Um, so like I said, a, a good real estate attorney is going to help them through those processes, looking at the title work, making sure the PA protects them, and then ultimately going to the closing or at least getting what's called a attorney package in advance of the closing, look right. at everything they're going to sign and go from there. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and if you have a, and a real estate agent who's a new agent, they're not really going to know much about title insurance either usually. Yeah, and, and the title company is not there to represent the buyer or the seller. They're there to do the research and let people know what's what. But if you don't understand the culture of that title insurance policy, those exceptions and so forth, it's not their job per se to explain it. So being represented at, you know, by a seasoned agent at least and, and furthermore by a, a real estate attorney is really good. Not only that, Paul, but what I see at the closing table is sometimes with the, the American Dreamer shows up to the closing thinking that they're going to ask questions to the notary or the closer. That person can only facilitate the closing. They're right. not there to decipher legal documents or give you legal advice. That, In fact, they're not attorneys. They're, they would, they're not allowed They would to. be way outside of their expertise and therefore open to liability if they began, to, you're in effect, trying to practice law without a license at that point. Exactly. So the closer, they're not allowed. The closer is more like a referee. He sees the play on the field, <laughs> yeah. or he Good. or she. Uh, they're going to explain what they see, and that's all they can tell you. They yeah. don't know about that title work at that point. They might have the marked-up title at the closing, but they're not there to decipher that. Yeah. You're listening to Michigan Real Talk with Paul and Tina Curtis. We're here every Sunday noon on W.